Hello and welcome to Cobble Critters. In this tutorial video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to play. So to get started, uh, just a quick primer about the game's story. In Cobble Critters, you play as a critter tamer, which is a person who stumbled into this magical space beneath the Earth's surface called the Caverns. Uh, the Caverns are full of weird critters and magical crystals, and in this game, your goal is going to be to collect these crystals. So to win the game, you can either play a short game where you need 10 crystals to win, or if you prefer, you can instead play a longer, more competitive game to 20 crystals. So before you can play Cobble Critters, you're going to want to know about the two different kinds of cards in the game. There's purple-backed critter cards, like Hip Hopper here. Critters are your friends and fighters, they have battle stats and abilities. You'll move them around the board and use them to fight your opponent. To help them out, there's also red-backed special cards, like Emerald Gauntlets here. Special cards are like a grab bag of tricks that can do all sorts of things. During the game, you're going to have two separate decks, one of critters and one of specials, and they'll each also have their own face-up discard piles. If you want to build your own deck, you can. Your decks have to add up to exactly 45 cards, and each of them has to have at least 10 cards in it. The limit for a given card is 3 copies. Aside for those limitations though, you can build any deck you like. Alright, now we can talk about the game's board. The board has 4 zones. Uh, first up there is your hideout then your caverns, then your opponent's caverns, and then your opponent's hideout. In each of these purple spaces, uh, you can fit one critter. These bags you will not see in the physical version of the game. These are spots to equip your critters with trinkets. I'll explain those later, but critters never move into those spots. All right, now let's talk about the stars of the show, critters. Critters are your monsters that will be moving around the board. You'll use them to conquer the caverns and take down your opponent. So every critter has a couple important stats you're going to want to look out for. In the top left is the most important stat, star rank. It goes from 1 to 3, and more stars means the critter is stronger. On the bottom, you'll find health, which is how much damage the critter can take before it's defeated, its attack, and then its defense. Something else you'll find on a lot of critters is card text in the box under their stats. Card text gives you special abilities that you can take advantage of to get the edge on your opponent. The last thing to look out for on your critters is their damage types. There's purple magical and red physical. Furring, for example, has red physical attack, but purple magical defense, while Pinata Conda over here has red physical attack and defense. Damage types determine if you'll be able to block your opponent's attacks. Speaking of damage types, let's talk about how attacking works in this game. You'll attack your opponent's critters to damage and eventually defeat them to earn crystals. When a critter attacks, they have to be in the caverns, and you can pick an enemy that's in front of or diagonally in front of the critter that you're attacking with. So Crystallion here can hit Sasquatch, Wimpire, and Ferring. But if Ferring was over there, it would be too far away for Crystallion to hit. In order to do an attack, just look at the attacker's attack type and the defender's defense type. And if they match, the defender will block some of the incoming damage. First up, if Crystallion was to attack Sasquatch, it would be 3 magical attack versus 3 physical defense. Those types don't match, so Sasquatch takes all three of the damage. If Crystallion attacked Wimpire, though, Wimpire has one magical defense versus Crystallion's three magical attack, so it would only take two damage, three minus one. Now, if Crystallion tried to attack Ferring, it would technically do three minus three damage, but you always do at least one damage with any attack. Now, when a critter has taken as much damage as they have health, like Wimpire here, who's taken two damage and has two health, it goes to the owner's discard pile and is defeated. So it goes to the owner's discard, and as a reward for defeating the opponent's critter, the other player receives one crystal per star on the critter. So Wimpire was a one-star critter, so that's one crystal to this player. On the other hand, if this player was to defeat Sasquatch, they would receive two crystals because Sasquatch is a two-star critter. One last thing to know about critters before we move on is that critters can either be unexhausted, vertical, like Crystallion here, or they can be exhausted, turned sideways. Critters get exhausted when they do all sorts of things, from moving, to attacking, to mining for crystals, to coming into the game. And once a critter is exhausted, there won't be much they'll be able to do, though at the end of your turn, all of your exhausted critters become unexhausted again. Okay, now we can talk about special cards. There are three different kinds of special cards, hijinks, trinkets, and events, and you can play as many special cards as you want during your turn, and they do all sorts of different things. So let's get into it. Hijinx cards with a pink icon in the top left corner are by far the easiest to use. All you have to do is reveal it from your hand, read it out loud, put in your discard, and do what it says. So inner piece here heals health to a critter equal to its star rank, so I can heal Cactal here for two health. 
Trinkets are also pretty easy to use. They have a bag icon in the top left corner. Every critter can have one trinket equipped, so to play a trinket, take it out of your hand, pick one of your critters who doesn't have a trinket yet, and give it to them. Trinkets add their text to the equipped critter, so Cactal here gets one more attack and one more defense thanks to the Pinata Tana. The last type of special cards are events with an hourglass in the top left corner. To play an event, just put it into your event slot and put counters on it equal to its duration. Crabalanche lasts for one round. At the start of each of your turns, you'll remove one counter. For countdown events, when the last counter is removed, they do something. Crabalanche, for example, does 3 damage to all critters in the cavern. There's also another type of events, called passive events, that have an effect until they're removed. So while Crystal Reactor is active, this effect affects the board. One last thing to look at on your specials is Ultra status. You can tell if a card is an Ultra because it says Ultra in the top left corner and because the nameplate glows. Inner Fury, Ruby Cutlass, and Crabalanche are all Ultras, while the three up here are not. Every turn, you can play any number of specials, but only one of those specials is allowed to be an Ultra. So, on one turn, I could play Pinata Tana, Inner Peace, and Crystal Reactor, but if I played Inner Fury, I wouldn't be able to play Crabalanche or Ruby Cutlass. Now one last thing to keep in mind is this game's hand limit. In this game you can hold up to 6 cards in your hand at a time, and if you ever end up with more, you've got to immediately choose something to discard. So if I found myself with 7 cards in my hand like this, I'd have to discard one of them. Additionally, you can only hold up to 4 special cards, like this, and if you ever found yourself with too many special cards, you'd have to pick one of them to discard. Alright, we're ready to play. First, choose one of the 2 players to go first. Then, shuffle both of your decks and draw a starting hand of 6 cards. Your 6 cards can be from either deck and you get to draw cards one at a time. So I can draw a critter, then a critter, then a special, a special, another critter, and then a special. Once you're done with that, you can pick any number of cards in your hand to return to your deck, shuffle, and then redraw. This is called your mulligan. So I might return Blazing Boat, Take the Cake, Kaiju Candy, and Suplex Belt to their respective decks. Then I'll shuffle my decks and draw back to a full hand. The only restriction to keep in mind is that you're only allowed to hold up to four red backed special cards in your hand at a time. Aside from that, you can draw any combination of cards. All right, now that you know about the different kinds of cards in Cobble Critters and what they do, let's talk about how to take your turn. So on your turn, you've got three things you can do. You can take two actions, move your critters, and play specials. You can do these things in any order, and you can go back and forth between them as well. The first and most important action is Summon. To summon, just pick a one-star critter from your hand, like Flickerfly here, and place it exhausted into any empty spot in your hideout. You now have a one-star critter ready to fight. The next action is called Upgrade, and it lets you replace your weaker critters with stronger ones. To upgrade, just pick a critter on the board, like Picassimelian here, who's unexhausted, and a critter from your hand with one more star, so the one star Picassimelian can be upgraded to the two star Toxosaurus. Put the old one into your discard pile, and put the new one in its place, exhausted. If the old critter had taken any damage, or was carrying a trinket, both of those things move to the new critter. The next action is called Fight, and it's pretty simple if you remember the attacking rules from earlier. All you have to do is pick one of your critters in the caverns, an opponent's critter within range, then exhaust yours and do an attack. The last action is called Mine, and it's pretty simple. All you have to do is just pick one of your critters in the caverns, exhaust it, and you earn a free crystal. Now that you know about the four different actions, Summon, Upgrade, Fight, and Mine, let's talk about how to move your critters around. On your turn, as many times as you like, and this doesn't even cost an action, you can just exhaust any of your critters to move it up, down, left, or right. So I can exhaust Flickerfly to move it here, here, or here. On the other hand, I can exhaust Toxosaurus here to move it here, or here. And as I explained a couple moments ago, you can also play any number of specials during your turn. So I can play Inner Peace to heal my Flickerfly, and then equip it with the Pinata Tana. When you're done with your turn, you can end your turn. So first, unexhaust all of your critters, then discard any cards you don't want to their respective discard piles, and then draw to a full hand of six cards and you can choose whichever decks you want to draw from and draw cards one at a time. When you're done drawing your cards, it's your opponent's turn to go. Now the last thing you might want to know about is what to do if your decks run out. Once both of your decks are out of cards, you can flip over your discard piles, shuffle them, and then keep drawing. One thing to watch out for though is that if one of your decks runs out before the other one, you'll have to keep drawing cards from the other deck to empty it before you're allowed to reshuffle. 
And that's it. You now know how to play Cobble Critters. Just get 10 or 20 crystals to win depending on your game length and you're good to go. Now, before we finish up the video, I want to talk about the actual effects that you'll see on cards to give you a better understanding for when they come up during the game. There's three types of text that you'll see on cards. Keywords, triggers, and effects. Let's talk about keywords first. Keywords are bold words that appear on cards, like ranged on Vantastack here. That gives them special powers. For example, ranged means that when the critter makes an attack, it can hit any enemy in the cavern, not just the ones right in front of it. Dash means that the critter enters the game unexhausted instead of exhausted. Double strike means that if the critter attacks, it will get a bonus second attack. And piercing means that when the critter attacks, you ignore your opponent's defense and always deal full damage. Triggers and effects are often together on cards. Triggers determine when effects activate. So to get started, let's look at Toxosaurus here, who has a summon effect that lets you deal some damage. Summon means when the critter is summoned into the game. There's also start slash end of turn, which means at the start or end of the critter's owner's turn, you'll activate the effect. Damaged means after the critter takes any quantity of damage, do something. Defeated means after the critter is defeated. Attack means after the critter makes an attack against an opponent. Upgraded means after the critter is upgraded. And action means that you can spend one or both of your turn's actions to activate the linked effect. Effects are what triggers activate. There's shift, which means move without exhausting. Heal x health, that means remove damage. Deal x damage, which means place damage on the target, ignoring defense. Attack, which means make a normal attack. Draw, which means add a card to your hand. And search, which means look for a card. And that's it. You now know how to play Cobble Critters. Congratulations. But the best teacher is experience. So if you'd like to play right now, you can play for free in Tabletop Simulator and on Screentop.gg. If you want to find someone to play with, we've got a Discord full of people who would love to throw down with you. In case you're not aware, Cobble Quitters is coming soon as a physical game that you'll be able to get off of Kickstarter, so join our Discord or sign up for the mailing list if you want to see that when it comes out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the caverns.